welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons make sure you like and subscribe this is a BTEC applied science unit 5 chemistry lesson and it looks at the uses of substances we're going to be looking at the use of calcium hydroxide in effluent treatment then we're going to look at alumina in refractories and then we're going to finish off with looking at the uses of transition metals if you haven't seen the previous three videos on these three topics then i suggest you go away and watch those first so let's look first at this term effluent the term effluent is a term given to the liquid waste that's discharged into rivers and streams by factories or industries and many factories and many industries, they use sulfuric acid at some point in their process. And what can happen is that this can, can lead to the effluent being acidic. And if you were to just leave the effluent acidic, it's going to cause an awful lot of damage to the environment around it by lowering the pH of the water. So what needs to happen is we need to increase the pH of the effluent so that it's no longer acidic. Now, from one of the previous videos, you'll recognize metal hydroxides as bases. Now, bases will react with acid to produce um, a neutralization reaction. And in this case, if we treat sulfuric acid with calcium hydroxide, we'd produce a salt of calcium sulfate and water and therefore neutralizing the acidic effluent. So it's no longer going to cause as much damage to the environment as it would have done as a low pH sulfuric acid. Next up is looking at alumina in refractories. So let's look at what is meant by a refractory material. So a refractory material is a material that's physically and chemically stable at very high temperatures. Alumina is aluminium oxide, which has the chemical formula Al2O3. It maintains its strength at very high temperatures and it's also chemically and physically stable at high temperatures. So you can see already that it fits the definition of a refractory material. That makes it excellent for use inside furnaces and chemical reactors because it's very stable at high temperatures and also it has a very high melting point. So therefore it remains stable at high temperatures too. So we're going to move on to the third and final section then we're going to look at the uses of transition metals and transition metal compounds before we do a couple of definitions to help us moving forward so a catalyst that's a substance that would increase the rate of reaction without being used up sometimes it is used in the reaction but it would be then regenerated at the end and therefore left unchanged the activation energy that's the minimum amount of energy required between colliding particles in order for a successful collision to take place. So let's look at the properties of transition metals and transition metal compounds, which makes them useful for catalysts. So transition metals and their compounds, they're often used as catalysts, and that's very important in industry because it allows the reaction to take place at lower temperatures, which means less energy is required or used in industry, which in turn reduces the cost of production. Transition metals do have lots of different oxidation states. You may recall this from unit one. They're very good at aiding the transfer of electrons. They offer alternative reaction pathways with lower activation energies. That's what a catalyst does. So let's look at a specific example then which is vanadium oxide in the contact process. The contact process is just a name given to the industrial process that produces sulfuric acid. The catalyst is V2O5, vanadium pentoxide, and there's four stages to the contact process. Now, you don't need to memorize all of these equations, but these are the four main stages. Sulfur is burnt in oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide, the sulfur dioxide then takes part in a reversible reaction with more oxygen to make sulfur trioxide. A small amount of sulfuric acid is then used with the sulfur trioxide to make what we call fuming sulfuric acid. And then water is then added at this stage to produce sulfuric acid. 
Now, the key step in this process is the second step because it's reversible. And this is where the catalyst comes in. Now, again, you don't need to learn all of these equations. But what you can see here in this box is that the sulfur dioxide is reacting with the catalyst. The catalyst is changing from V2O5 to V2O4. But then notice how the catalyst from V2O5 or 4, sorry, is then regenerated to V2O5. So the catalyst is changing, but then it's changing back. So it actually remains unchanged. So this is an example of a catalyst being involved in the reaction, but coming out unchanged in the end. So you don't need to memorize these equations, but recognize that the catalyst is unchanged. Second example is iron in the harbour process. Now the harbour process is a name given to the process used in industry to make ammonia, which is NH3. And that's really important because it's used to make fertilisers, which increases crop yield. Now what happens in this case, the iron doesn't actually get involved directly in the reaction, but the iron offers a surface for the hydrogen and nitrogen to adsorb or bind to. And what happens when they do bind to the iron is the bonds weaken. Now, when the bonds weaken in the reactants, it allows the chemical reaction to take place much more easily and therefore lowers the activation energy. I'm going to look at one more example here. Now, this wasn't actually named in the specification, but it's a very common example. Um, the catalytic converter contains platinum, palladium and rhodium, which are all metals, precious metals. And what happens here is it converts polluting gases into non-polluting gases. So it's fitted to the back end of an internal combustion engine. And by law, all cars have to have these. So what it does is it will convert carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide, which are pollutants. It will turn them into non-pollutant gases such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen. And that's the end. So hopefully you found this useful. If you did, please make sure you let me know and good luck.